Is it possible for visionaries like Elon Musk to emerge in Africa? Despite challenging conditions, Ghana has introduced its version of Elon Musk, Kelvin. This hero inspires hope among Africans for a brighter future. But what exactly has he accomplished? Let's find out. In a small town tucked away in the heart of Ghana, there lives a young man whose ingenuity and persistence have sparked curiosity, admiration, and hope. His name is Kelvin and the people who know him have taken to calling him the Elon Musk of Ghana. I found Kelvin. Hi, I'm Kelvin, and people call me the Elon Musk of Ghana. This title isn't just a nickname thrown around lightly. It's a reflection of the audacity and vision that Kelvin embodies, traits that have led him to build an entire car from scratch with his bare hands, no formal training, and very little in the way of resources. Kelvin's journey to becoming a local hero is about far more than just a mechanical achievement. It's about determination in the face of adversity, a passion that never wavered, and the ability to dream bigger than his circumstances should have allowed. Growing up in a place where the average family earns less than $300 a month, Kelvin didn't let poverty define his future. His story is one of resilience, defying the odds, and opening the doors of possibility, not just for himself, but for countless others who see in him the embodiment of potential. Kelvin's story has become an inspiration, particularly in a society where financial limitations often dictate one's prospects. He represents the spirit of innovation thriving in unexpected places, proof that genius can flourish under the most challenging conditions. But what makes everyone question is how Kelvin's upbringing shaped his passion for building machines. Kelvin was born and raised in a small, unassuming town in Ghana, where resources were scarce and opportunities even scarcer. His family lived humbly, like many others in the region, scraping by on less than $300 a month. Kelvin's parents, like most in his town, worked hard to provide for their children, but luxuries, things like toys, books, and additional education, were far beyond their reach. Yet Kelvin had something far more valuable than money curiosity. As a child, Kelvin was unlike other kids in his town. While they spent their free time playing games or running around the neighborhood, Kelvin was more interested in taking things apart. Radios, discarded electronics, anything mechanical he could find. He wanted to know how things worked from the inside out. I didn't have the money to buy toys, so I made my own, Kelvin recalls with a smile. From the age of 10, he began building small machines, robots, toy cars, and even rudimentary vacuum cleaners, all from scrap materials that he scavenged around his house or in the streets. He had no instruction manuals, no guidance, just his natural intuition and an insatiable drive to create. I realized I have a passion in me of creating machines. I didn't go to any engineering school. I taught myself. Kelvin's passion didn't go unnoticed. While some admired his inventiveness, others questioned his pursuits. People thought I was strange, Kelvin said. They didn't understand what I was trying to do, and some even told me to stop wasting my time. From the beginning when I started building this car, people didn't uh, understand what I was really trying to do. They were trying to discourage me. Some people were even telling me that I'm even going mad. For a child growing up in such difficult circumstances, it would have been easy to get discouraged. But Kelvin's response to criticism wasn't to give up. Instead, he doubled down on his efforts, spending countless hours in his tiny garage, surrounded by scrap metal and old parts, determined to make something great. The idea of creating something bigger, something that could have a tangible impact on his community, drove Kelvin. His modest beginnings and the environment around him only fueled his desire to innovate. I saw the world differently, he explains. Where others saw broken things, I saw potential. This unique perspective was pivotal in shaping Kelvin's future as an engineer. He wasn't just learning how things worked. He was developing the critical thinking skills necessary to solve complex problems with limited resources. This formative period laid the groundwork for what would become Kelvin's most audacious project, building a car from scratch. But how did Kelvin move from building toys to constructing a fully functional car? Here's a reminder to please like and share the video and subscribe to our channel to watch more videos on black culture, history, civilization, and identity.
Let's continue now. By the time Kelvin was 14, he had outgrown building small gadgets and robots. His sights were set on something bigger, a car. For most, even considering such a feat would have been outlandish, but Kelvin had already achieved the impossible with his smaller projects. Now, he wanted to prove to himself and to those who doubted him that he could take his skills to the next level. Kelvin's journey to build his car started as always with observation. I would spend hours at local car shops, just watching how mechanics worked, Kelvin says. I didn't ask too many questions because I knew they wouldn't take me seriously. And without it, his car would never move. The cost of a car engine was far beyond what his family could afford. Determined not to let this stop him, Kelvin took on part-time jobs, doing construction work, selling scrap, and helping out wherever he could earn a few dollars. Every penny he made went into his project. It was hard, Kelvin admits. He says, sometimes I would work all day, come home tired, and then spend all night working on the car, but I knew it would be worth it. In doing menial jobs, sometimes helping the constructors building, selling scrap materials to get money. For four years, Kelvin toiled away. There were countless setbacks, parts that didn't fit, mechanical failures, and moments where it seemed like the entire project would fall apart. I had days where nothing seemed to go right, Kelvin recalls but every failure taught me something new. I kept going because I believed in what I was doing. At long last, at the age of 18, Kelvin completed his car. The Kelvin Mobile, as it was affectionately named, was sleek, with a futuristic design. The doors opened upward, like a Ferrari's, and the engine, finally purchased after years of saving, roared to life. The car wasn't just a shell, it had a fully functional engine, a gear stick, mirrors, and even a radio for music. And all of this had been created with scrap metal and a total budget of under $3,000. The unveiling of Kelvin's car was met with awe. In a town where the average person could hardly afford basic transportation, a young man had built a working vehicle from nothing but scraps. This achievement marked a turning point, not only for Kelvin, but for those around him. His success was a testament to what could be accomplished with grit, determination, and an unrelenting belief in one's abilities. So, could Kelvin lead the charge in developing Africa's first self-driving electric car? While Kelvin's first car was a mechanical marvel, his mind was already racing ahead to the future. I don't just want to build cars, Kelvin says. I want to build electric cars that can drive themselves. Inspired by Elon Musk's Tesla, Kelvin believes that the future of transportation lies in electric vehicles, and more specifically, self-driving cars that can navigate Ghana's roads with safety and efficiency in mind. Kelvin's ambitions come at a time when the world is pivoting toward electric vehicles and EVs, with governments and companies investing billions into their development. However, the infrastructure in Ghana and many other African countries presents unique challenges. Roads are often unpaved, traffic regulations are loosely enforced, and the cost of importing electric vehicles is prohibitive for most consumers but Kelvin isn't deterred. I want to build cars that will prevent accidents, Kelvin explains. In Ghana, we have many problems with road safety. I believe that autonomous vehicles could help reduce accidents and make transportation safer for everyone. For him, electric cars represent more than just environmental sustainability. They are a potential solution to the challenges facing Ghana's transportation system. But Kelvin knows that building a self-driving car in Ghana is no easy feat. The country's infrastructure isn't as developed as that of Western nations, and the technology needed to create such a vehicle is both expensive and hard to come by. However, he is no stranger to overcoming obstacles. If I can build a car from scrap metal, then I believe I can create an electric self-driving vehicle, Kelvin asserts. He has already begun studying the necessary technology, learning about sensors, software and batteries, all components of a modern electric vehicle. I've been researching electric car technology, he says. I'm looking at how sensors can be used to help cars navigate, and I'm also trying to design a battery system that's affordable and durable for African conditions. Kelvin envisions a future where his electric cars would not only revolutionize transportation in Ghana, but could also become a symbol of African innovation on the global stage. His dream is to create vehicles that are affordable, durable, 
and well-suited to the diverse landscapes across Africa. From the bustling streets of Accra to the remote, rugged terrains in rural areas, he knows the limitations of current electric vehicles on the market, especially when it comes to affordability and accessibility in countries like Ghana, where many rely on inexpensive second-hand gasoline vehicles. He says he wants to build electric cars that Africans can afford. He acknowledged the gap between the cutting-edge technology being developed in places like the US and Europe and the economic realities in Africa. He says it doesn't make sense for us to import expensive Teslas when we can make something more affordable right here. One of the most crucial elements Kelvin is focusing on is battery technology. The current cost of electric vehicle batteries is one of the biggest barriers to producing affordable EVs. Kelvin has been researching alternatives, exploring options like solar charging capabilities, which could take advantage of Africa's abundant sunlight. He thinks that if they can figure out how to integrate solar power into electric vehicles, they can reduce costs even further and make these cars accessible to everyone. In addition to making the vehicles affordable, Kelvin is working on developing technologies that can adapt to the unpredictability of Africa's roads. With the lack of comprehensive traffic regulation systems and inconsistent infrastructure, self-driving cars would need to be smarter and more adaptable. Kelvin is excited by the challenge, but why are people calling him Elon Musk of Ghana? While building cars is Kelvin's passion, his dreams stretch even further. He says, one day, he wants to build airplanes. He thinks air travel in Africa should be more accessible, and he wants to make that happen. But it's not just airplanes that Kelvin has his eyes on. He's also deeply fascinated by space travel and dreams of building rockets that could one day explore other planets. Kelvin's fascination with aerospace engineering started when he was still a teenager. Watching videos of SpaceX launches online opened his eyes to a whole new world of possibilities. When I saw what Elon Musk was doing with SpaceX, I thought, why not me, Kelvin recalls. Why can't Africa have its space program? Kelvin believes that Africa has the potential to become a leader in aerospace innovation, and he wants to be at the forefront of that movement. He wants to inspire young people in Ghana and across Africa to dream big and to believe that they can build anything they set their minds to. To that end, Kelvin has begun studying aerospace engineering in his free time. He's teaching himself the basics of aerodynamics, propulsion systems, and aircraft design. He has started working on small models of planes and rockets. He knows it's a long journey, but I believe I can make it happen. Kelvin's dream is to one day build affordable airplanes that can connect African countries more easily, making travel across the continent quicker and cheaper. Air travel in Africa has long been a challenge due to high costs and limited routes. Kelvin sees an opportunity to change that by developing affordable, fuel-efficient planes designed specifically for the needs of African countries. There's no reason why Africa can't have its fleet of airplanes built by Africans. They just need to believe in themselves and take the first step. How is Kelvin's story impacting the people of Ghana, and what does it mean for the future of African innovation? Kelvin's car has become a local sensation. Every time he takes it out for a drive, Crowds gather to see the marvel of his creation. People take pictures. They ask him how he did it. He says it's amazing to see how excited they get. But more than just being a spectacle, Kelvin's car is a symbol of what is possible when passion and perseverance come together. Children in his town now look up to him as a role model. They call me the Elon Musk of Ghana, Kelvin says, but I just want to be Kelvin. He's been invited to speak at local schools, where he shares his story and encourages young students to follow their dreams, no matter the obstacles. I want them to know that they can do anything, he says. They don't need money or fancy education, just the will to keep going. Kelvin's story has also inspired many adults, including engineers, educators, and entrepreneurs. Local mechanics who once doubted his abilities are now asking him for advice. It's funny how things change, Kelvin reflects. People who used to tell me I was wasting my time are now coming to me for ideas. Kelvin's success is beginning to catch the attention of people outside his town as well. Government officials have shown interest in supporting his efforts, and there have even been discussions about offering him scholarships to study engineering abroad. He says, he is not sure if I'll go, he wants to keep working here in Ghana. This is where he belongs, 
and this is where he wants to make a difference. His impact is already being felt. Kelvin has started mentoring young students who are interested in engineering, teaching them the basics of mechanics and electronics. He hopes to one day open a school where young Ghanaians can learn practical engineering skills. I want to give back to my community, Kelvin explains. I want to help the next generation of inventors get started. Kelvin's story is more than just an individual success. It's a beacon of hope for countless others in Ghana and across Africa. He represents the untapped potential that exists in every corner of the continent, waiting for the opportunity to shine. If I can do it, anyone can, Kelvin says humbly. I'm just one person. Imagine what we could achieve if everyone believed in themselves the way I do. So, Kelvin's journey from a small garage in Ghana to becoming a self-taught engineer is a testament to the power of imagination, hard work, and unrelenting passion. His story serves as a reminder that genius can emerge from the most unlikely places and that innovation isn't reserved for the wealthy or well-resourced. Kelvin's dreams of building electric cars, airplanes, and even rockets may seem far-fetched to some, but for him, they are within reach. As Kelvin continues to dream big and work tirelessly toward his goals, one thing is clear, his story is far from over. The Elon Musk of Ghana is just getting started and the world is watching closely to see what this young innovator will achieve next. Do you think he is the new Elon Musk or better than him? Under the conditions he lives in, is having such a vision ordinary? Let us know in the comment section. Do you see Africa's future after knowing Kelvin? Do you want to watch more videos like this one? If so, subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon next to it. We have decided to bring videos on something nobody talks about, the black culture, civilization, history, and evidence about how glorious blacks have been. Thanks for watching, and until the next video, stay tuned.